been building a lot of lightsabers lately, so I decided to see if his glowy stabby knowledge can be applied to the Lord of the Rings. Spoiler, it can. For this build, I used wood, wood glue, putty, super glue, hot glue, sharpie, silver rubbing buff, paint, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I'm going to draw a rough sketch onto cardstock. Cardstock is just dense paper, so it can easily be turned into a stencil. Just, just going to tape these two sheets together. It can actually be run through a printer for anyone interested in using this template when I'm finished. Link below. Of course, you can also use a 3D design application, but I already know how to draw, so this is faster for me. Also, I feel like more people can draw than can use SketchUp, you know? Just like in the world, right? When I was happy with the drawing, I cut it out. I separated the blade, crossguard, grip, and pommel into separate pieces. Then I traced them onto scrap MDF wood. That's medium density fiberboard. It's a wood that's incredibly easy to cut through and sand. Normally I use foam floor mats, but not this time. There's nothing wrong with them, it's just I kind of already did a foam sword. I'd basically be using the same techniques as I showed you in the Avatar build, the Avatar sword build. Wouldn't be bringing anything new to the table, you know? And true, EVA foam is actually a lot safer than wood because it's less hazardous to work with and yields a less dangerous prop. But for my purposes, I need this prop to be a bit less flexible than foam, you know? I cut out the pieces using this unholy cross between a saber saw and a scroll saw, so the dust kicked up by MDF wood is even worse to breathe than EVA foam dust, so I wear a mask while doing this. I'm cutting a little bit outside the lines because I don't have great control with this saw, and if, if this piece decides to wander on me, you know, it's always easier to remove material than add it back. This means I'll have to do slightly more sanding, but I think I can live with that. For most of the sanding, I'll be using my belt sander. First, I cleaned up the belt a little bit using this belt sander cleaner. It's just a block of rubber. This will make it work better as it clears off the residue from the previous project. I think in this case it was resin. Almost has the effect of erasing the grit. It's just so malleable. Then I sanded away the excess. MDF dust will get everywhere, so be sure to vacuum after the fact. The belt sander can be overkill in places, so after a while, I switched to the rotary tool, which is a little bit slower, but it offers more control. If you're new to prop making, a rotary tool can be a much less expensive starter tool than a belt sander would be. In order to get the blade to have that diamond shape, I'm going to need to sand it into a bevel along each edge. To maintain symmetry, I'm going to draw lines down the center of each side of the sword using a Sharpie marker, not a sponsor. Then I brought it back over to the belt sander. As I sanded it into a bevel, I periodically stopped to check my progress as it's insanely easy to over sand with MDF. That is one quarter of my work. All right, so now I gotta do the other three. Here it is half sanded. I kind of like that. Looks like a boat. Gonna keep that in mind if I'm ever making a model of a sunfish. And there's four. So I refine that even more with my rotary tool and very fine grit sanding sponge. This will flatten it out even more. Now comes the most challenging part of this build, recording the voiceover. <laughs> it's a whole thing. You gotta get the microphones and the XLR cables. It's just, oh, it's such a nightmare. But I digress. Carving the squiggly letters. First, I drew them on with pencil. Definitely not the most challenging part of the build. So I've sketched the inscription onto just one side. I think it's on both in the movies, but I kind of want one blank just so that I can use this for other projects, like non Lord of the Rings specific projects. Got the little Elvish in there. Now etching those out is going to be really difficult, so I'm going to need to consult my files. Get it? Because they're files? <laughs> Uh, kill me now. Dead joke. I've been breathing formaldehyde. It's making me loopy. Oh, hey, safety tip. Carbon monoxide detector. They cost nothing. Get one. Keep it in your workshop. They'll save your life. There's a lot of close work involved here. So if your eyesight isn't fantastic, you may want to use a magnifying glass I'm using a jeweler's loop because I can't find my soldering magnifier. Things disappear in this shop. I got a whole organizational system. Totally useless. Now this will give you carpal tunnel after a while. So I took frequent yet short breaks. Okay, so here we go. This needs to be glossy at the end so that I can get a good release from the mold. The reason I have to do so many coats is because the first few get absorbed, not unlike EVA foam, by the way, and the coat comes out looking flat as opposed to glossy. Now, in order for the top coat of silver to come out shiny, the base coat has to also be shiny, glossy. All right, so this is with one coat, and you can see that while it's clearly, you know, better than just plain old wood. It's only shiny in the very middle and the rest is still flat and non-reflective. So let's give it another coat. All right, this is with two layers on and now it's uh, shiny, but there's still a little bit of stippling. 
So I'm gonna keep on going. It's like an onyx blade. It is very important. This is supposed to look like it sort of meshes. So this one has to be a little bit lower and this is gonna get the elvish. I went a little bit too far on the sanding in some places. So to build it back up, I'm using red squadron putty. That's what it's called, right? Oh, nope, this is Bondo glazing putty. Although red squadron putty will work. Just, you know, some kind of filler material. So I was gonna use this handle as the sword handle, but it's a little bit too symmetrical. It's not quite long enough, so I'm sand it down and then taper it. Then I painted it up and I hot glued it to a piece of cardboard to stand it upright while it dried. While I was drying, I finished the etching, which is actually hard to see in direct light. So let me just turn off some lights. There we go. Terrible shot, but you get what I'm going for. Then I painted that side of the blade. While those coats were drying, I made a pommel using the handle for reference. Oh look, it's EVA foam. How I've missed the... I cut that up with scissors and refined it with my rotary tool. Then I traced a stencil so that I could make a copy and glue it to the original, which will give me the desired width. It's gotta be a little bit wider than the handle. Arguably than the cross guard. Nah, you can get away with it. I made sure there was space for the end of the handle before gluing them together. I puttied the seam in order to erase it. I etched more drunken cursive lettering onto the cross guard before painting it. Go home, Legolas, you're drunk. When the seam filler had dried, I painted the pommel as well. These also got as many coats as the blade, but I'm not gonna make you sit through all that footage again. <laughs> when the final layer dried, I metalized all the pieces. I'm gonna use rub and buff on the pommel and the cross guard. I've spoken endlessly about the positives and negatives of using rub and buff in many of my other videos. Videos, so I don't feel the need to rehash any of that. But I think for this particular build, it's all right. Do I have even coverage? I may have to redo this later because I, I gotta put this in a vise. I've gotta drill a hole in it. You don't wanna put it on real thick on the uh, on the part with the lettering because you'll get rub and buff in the grooves and that will not really erase the lettering, but it'll have the effect of making it extremely hard to see. In fact, I could go back in. Oh, you don't wanna put it on here real heavy because the blade has to connect here. And there that is. I did the same thing to the blade. It dries pretty quickly, but I gave it a few minutes before flipping it over to the other side. Then it was time to fit all the pieces together. To strengthen this connection, I decided to make a simple spine using a dowel. To make room for it, I drilled a hole through the center of all the pieces. Not all the way through the blade, clearly couple inches will do. Then I glued the pieces together with wood glue. I made the spiral grip detail by cutting thin strips of foil tape and wrapping them at a sort of diagonal angle around the grip. The leaves were also cut from foil tape. Finally, I glued on the pommel. And that's how to make, but wait, there's more. <sighs> Come on, man. Now, in order to make it glow blue and orcs are near, I have to make a silicone mold. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that mold making is easy. It's an exercise in disappointment that will make you question your life choices and chuck it all to become an accountant. But I've got a case of unopened silicone that's about to expire, so here we go. Cue Eye of the Tiger. We don't have the rights. Cue Boilerplate Kevin McLeod Action Track. Yeah. <sighs> Freaking YouTube. I built the mold walls out of foam core poster board, which you'll remember from a previous build was hidden behind my TIE fighter. I, I don't have time to explain that. I hot glued this all together and temporarily held the walls in place with machinist blocks while the glue hardens. It'll only take a few minutes. So a foam core is also an insulator, so it traps some of that heat, but it's not nearly as bad as EVA foam. This is gonna be a two-part mold, so I clayed it up. This is an extremely messy process, and the gloves turned out to be more of a stopgap measure, so couldn't really futz around with the camera when the battery cut out. Is what I'm choosing to blame the time jump on. I placed the sword at the center and smooshed the clay until it matched the blade edge. Then I added marbles for registration. I made divots for negative registration. These will eventually help keep the mold locked together and prevent leaks later on. I sprayed a release agent, Ease Release 200, on it before adding the final wall. This was so that I could get a good angle. You, you gotta cover absolutely every surface or else your prop will get entombed in the mold. To that end, I brushed it around with a paintbrush. Then I added a bit of PVC left over from, I don't know, some lightsaber build. This is going to act as a pore spout later on. I also added pencils to either end of the cross guard. These lead all all the way up to the same height as the pore spout, and when demolded, these will leave little tunnels that act as air channels. It means that I'll waste approximately two pencils worth of resin with each sword that I make, but I can live with that if it means I don't get bubbles in the grip. See, if you don't do this, then air bubbles will get trapped in the thin parts, in the handle, and then you'll have to do a lot of unnecessary filling. I made sure the seams of those walls were well sealed up with hot glue. Finally, 
I wrapped a length of tape around the whole thing so that the walls don't burst when it's filled with silicone. A lot of people don't realize how dense liquid silicone is. Like, it, it's got a weight to it. It basically acts like lava and pushes stuff out of the way as it spreads. And these walls, you, you know, foam core, it's just that. It's foam and paper. It's not very durable. Then I mixed up some silicone and I poured it into the mold. Now, I'm not sure you can see, but the silicone isn't quite covering the high points of the sword. So I'm going to increase the water level, silicone level, whatever you want to call it, with already solidified silicone from past molds that have since become useless. So I'm not just wasting trial kit after trial kit. Of course you could order in bulk. That's another school of thought, but I'm going to utilize what I have at my disposal first. You see these silicone molds, they don't last forever. Eventually they wear out, but the part that wears out is like just the surface area that's contacting the resin that you're pouring into the mold. Oh, I got blue on me, I'm gonna die. So most of the silicone in a ruined mold is still useful. Here, I'll, I'll show you. See that? This was at one point a kyber crystal mold. See how like the interior is like this light green, whereas the exterior is lavender. The lavender is still good. It's only this bit that is useless. Okay, now that's not quite enough. So my registration is sticking up up here and a bit of the pommel is sticking up down here. So, and luckily I have one more trial kit that I can use, which will be enough to cover up the bits of the prop that are still there. This technically worked, but it's gonna yield a very weak mold with all those cracks. So I filled them in with another batch of silicone, and then I waited a day. It should take less than that for the silicone to fully solidify. When the silicone finally did solidify, I removed the mold walls and the clay, being careful not to remove the sword. This, this process was just the worst. I can't, lost the ability to even. I took all the marbles out of there and set up a fan to dry the remaining clay. Once all the water was gone, and it was all dried out, it was much easier to chip away, which I did with some clay tools and an old toothbrush. When all the clay had been cleared away, I rebuilt the mold walls and put more release agent on the newly exposed side. I repeated the process, I waited another day for that, and then I opened it up to remove the sword. Now I have a two-part mold. There's a little bit of cleanup here. You gotta make sure all of the pore spouts are uncovered, and I had to cut more panels to hold it together for the casting process. See, it's so thin, if it's not held up straight, you're gonna get a bent blade. And then I added more release agent, not quite as much as before, primarily just to the sword part, trying to avoid the edges because you know, if I grease the entire surface area, that will facilitate the resin leaking out the sides. I set it upright and bound it together tightly to prevent leaks. Some leakage is inevitable, so I placed it in a bucket to catch any drips. Making a glow is more complicated than just pouring in resin, but nothing worth doing is easy. So let's power on through. So I was afraid something like this might happen with a mold that's this big. There was a teeny tiny little hole right there where I've marked it with Sharpie and half of the resin leaked out. Luckily, it solidified in there and plugged itself up, but it did cause a delay. That's one way you can know it's cured if, uh, I mean, fully solidified, is if it snaps. If the flash snaps off, that means it's solid. I mean, you can also just wait the recommended amount of time. Ah, uh, nice, nice. See, that's where it leaked. There's a seam there. Come on, you're ruining my awesome reveal. There we go. Oh, geez, what fell? Okay, I can fix this. And wooden brackets. I held it in place in a complicated scaffolding so that it wouldn't move. Then I mixed up some resin with a large amount of glow-in-the-dark powder. I poured it in and once again waited. When it solidified, I demolded it, which is easier said than done. Because just to make my life more difficult, it sprung another leak! But, you know, we've come this far. We must go on. And what's the worst that could happen? There's no face huggers in this franchise. See, this tells a story, and the story that it tells is the night I lost my faith in humanity. So. Clearly a couple of these pegs at the bottom didn't line up and held most of it open like a millimeter, but down here, it's like, a, it's like a quarter of an inch thick. So for future molds, I'm gonna get rid of the pegs and just glue the bottom shut with more silicone, not with glue. Believe it or not, this is actually more salvageable than the broken sword. Cause that half sword, that happened because the grease floated to the top of the first batch of resin and created a barrier between it and the second batch, like in the middle of the blade. This I was able to get to as it was still curing. So this is solid all the way through, even in that blue bit in the handle. So yeah, it leaked, but it stayed in one piece. And all I really have to do to fix this is clear away the excess resin, which I 
expected to do anyway. I just was hoping it wouldn't be quite so much. I got rid of most of that with some tin snips, which created this jagged sawtooth blade, like an Aztec blade. This is actually dangerous. This is like a real weapon. So let's take care of that. On the belt sander. There we go. Nice and smooth. I sawed off the pour spout and then sanded the pommel real quick. I washed off the grease, waited for it to dry, then painted it. Did brown for the handle and gloss black for the rest of it. It's a sunny day, so I left it in a window for a few hours. This is what it looks like in a dark room. Yeah, I'm trying to be careful. In fact, I'm gonna try and get most of it off of my finger before I go to the, the elvish lettering part of it. Cause if there's too much, it's gonna erase the lettering that I spent so much time on. Look at that. Great. It's decent. Then I rub and buffed it. And there you go. And that's how to make Sting. And now I'm ready to kill some spiders. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see upcoming builds. Because let's be honest, the subscribe button doesn't do what it used to. And if you actually want to get notified about upcoming builds, then you got to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, they'll be lost to the infinite scroll of your inbox. Be sure to leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons, the name scrolling by, on the right left, right, somewhere, who make these videos possible. To actually build something takes a whole lot more time and money. These videos just wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So if you enjoy these builds, want to see more of them, and want your build request to carry a bit more weight, then think about heading on over to the Patreon page, where you can enjoy ad-free early uploads. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later. I've been Jake. It's very difficult not to do this as Patrick Warburton. Why do you sword guys have to talk about how cool your swords are? Goose goes poison the poison for goose go. <gasps> My spinach puffs. My magnetic personality. Airports are the worst for me.